Greetings, Kim Lacal, the Jazz Vinyl Audio File, back again to talk about the ongoing reissue series from Blue Note called the, what is it called? The Blue Note 80 Vinyl Reissue Series. It gets confusing because Blue Note did, for two years straight, the 75th anniversary series where they were releasing, I think, four LPs a month for two years straight. And those were all cut from files by Alan Yoshida and Bernie Grudman. A lot of people didn't like them, people complain about them. They're $18.99, which is still the cheapest reissue in jazz available even if you come into the jazz record center or you order from amazon like uh stuff from wax time or wax love or all those weird eu labels those are all about 22 bucks uh don was went out of his way he told me in an interview to keep the 75th anniversary series solely at 18.99 a pop um and i think they're pretty great uh there were some pressing anomalies some people got you know records with ticks or pops or uh, grayish matter on the vinyl. The 10 or so I had were pretty good. But this series, the 80 vinyl reissue series to celebrate Blue Note's 80th year anniversary, it's really confusing, I tell you, um, are three LPs a month. I'm not sure for how many months, right up through April 20th, 2020. It's uh, And they all deal with themes, blue grooves, uh, great read, read miles covers, Blue Note Live and Drummer Leaders. Um, the three I want to talk about from August of this year Lou Donaldson, Alligator Boogaloo, John Schofield, Hand Jive, and the big surprise of me to this for these three was from 1971 Donald Byrd's Ethiopian Nights. Um, I'm only recently familiar with this Lou Donaldson record, Alligator Boogaloo, and I off the top of my head just didn't think much of it. I don't like the cover. It was kind of a really cheesy cover, uh, obviously after the uh, uh, Reed Miles era, maybe not in 1967, but, um, but it's actually a really good, funky record. The lineup includes Melvin Lasty, Sr. on cornet, Lou Donaldson, George Benson on guitar, which is, you know, I love George Benson and he sounds great on this record. And it's not the usual blue note thing we pull in Grant Green. Um, then Lonnie Smith on organ and Leo Morris or Idris Muhammad on drums. And it's a funky, popping, feel good record. Uh, you know, the really early Lou Donaldson records, he's basically doing a Charlie Parker thing and they're really upbeat. Then as it goes on, like um, I think with Grits and Gravy, I forgot some of the other titles, they get really in the cut, low down, funky. Um, you know, more bluesy swinging records. And this one, at 67, it's a little funkier. Um, but you got Lonnie Smith and George Benson, you know, really kicking the rhythm section. And at first, without listening to it, I'm thinking, is this Grant Green? It sounds a little too slick and hip for uh, Grant Green. You know, if you don't know, George Benson is one of the greatest jazz guitarists of all time. Um, I've interviewed John Schofield on a number of occasions, and he says George Benson's just an incredible freak of nature. You know, you should check out George Benson Uptown, or uh, or I think it's the other side of Abbey Road. The records before Breezin. He's an incredible guitar player. You know, he kind of looks, kind of gets dissed now because he had all his facial surgery and yada yada yada. When he's young, he plays his absolute butt off, and this is a good example of it. The guy can play anything. He's like to me the inheritor of West Montgomery with with his own stuff his own incredible flash and his own incredible technique why was george benson never on blue note he was on columbia then he was on cti then he was on warners then he became a rock star um hand job which is a double disc uh record is just prime you know it's go right after the whole blue matter band with dennis chambers and gary granger and so he's i believe that's right um no actually it's, i guess 87 or 88, right around that era, early 90s is when he goes back to playing straight ahead with Joe Lovano and Bill Stewart. And this record has Larry Goldings, Dennis Irwin, Bill Stewart, Don Elias, and Eddie Harris on tenor saxophone. And it is a really funky, it just, if you, if you dig uh, John Schofield, you will dig this record. Um, it's a double LP, which is really cool. Um, 180 gram vinyl. And you know, I'm a big fan of Schofield. He does what he does. Bill Stewart sounds fantastic. But as I said, the big surprise to me of, of these three records was from 1971, Donald Byrd, Ethiopian Nights, with the 10 Tet. It's two guitar players, probably not playing at once, um, four or five brass players, and it is right in the whole cut of Johnny Pate, Willie Hutch, 
Curtis Mayfield, Isaac Hayes doing Shaft, and also you can tell he's listened to Bitches Brew. Each side is one track long, and they're just, you know, it's just simmering, it's funky, it's flowing in and out. It's a really, I, I did, I know Donald Byrd is one of our uh, smartest jazz musicians. I believe he taught at Howard University. Um, and this record has a poem on the back by Bill Quinn. I can't read in this crap light, but a really great poem called The Music. And it's very urban and very gritty and refers to the ghettos uh, that were all over this country in every urban city. And I guess still are in some degrees, but not like they were in the uh, 60s and early 70s. But um, great lineup, Ed Green, who played on tons of... I'm not sure where, what he played on Ed Green. He played on I Got the News with Steely Dan, but he's also known for a lot of stack sessions. A white guy playing really super funky drums. Uh, Wilton Felder um, and Joe Sample, I believe, both from the Crusaders are playing on this record. And it's just a great record. Uh, I, I really didn't expect it. All of three of these are really great. Um, for my money, I'd probably get Ethiopian Nights first. And then after that, the John Schofield record. And there's some great titles upcoming in this uh, Blue Note Vinyl 80 series. Um, and as I said, it goes up through April 10th, 2020. Um, in October, which, are we in October now? Yoda Hip with Zoot Sims, Herbie Hancock Inventions and Dimensions, an incredibly hard record to find and a great record. Uh, you know, like a one-off of Herbie Hancock playing with two percussion players and it is burning. It's an avant-garde, sparse, you know, Afro-Cuban blowout record, Inventions and Dimensions from 63, and Joe Henderson in and out. I mean, Joe Henderson records are really hard to find, and that's one of the great ones. All the Joe Henderson records at Blue Note are great. That should be one to get. And then coming along in months ahead, Tony Williams' Foreign Intrigue in, in January, AT's Delight in February, uh, in April 2020, Andrew Hill Smokestack, Kenny Dorm Trumpeta Takata, Larry Young into something, another incredible record. I think Joe Henderson is on that record with Tony Williams, I think. Um, and also squeezed in there, titles everyone wants to see, Kenny Dorm, Una Mas, Grant Green Alive, Horace Silver doing the thing, Lee Conitz alone together, that's different, that's very hard to find. Is that Was that on Blue Note? I don't know. Um, Pete LaRocca, Basra, um, Elvin Jones, Mr. Jones, a hard record to find. All in all, and the, uh, the audio quality on all of these discs I have is stellar, no ticks or pops, super flat vinyl, super clean vinyl. They come in uh, simple white sleeves. People were complaining, oh, how come it's not the cool 75th anniversary sleeves? These are just white sleeves. I don't know what they list for. They probably list for more than the 75th anniversary, but not as much as the Tone Poets did. Um, but I think, you know, these guys, Blue Note continues to uh, hit it out of the park. And I'm, I'm really happy they've taken back their legacy and they continue to move forward. And if, uh, if you haven't heard the Tone Poets, the three I have sound utterly fantastic. Uh, next, I'm going to review the Spirit and Time box, the big heavy box set. And that's, that's a beautiful box set. Anyway, thanks for checking in. I hope you uh, subscribe. hope you enjoy my videos. I uh, like to do it once I fight my way through all my vinyl here, lining all over my crazy ass apartment. But I really appreciate your support. Thanks for checking in. Have a great holiday weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.